Hello, so Overwatch League. It's an interesting place, isn't it? Um Overwatch League is just an unknown at the moment. Very much like the game itself. It's you don't know how this coming 2022 season is going to pan out. There is a lot of change. Like this is going to be the most different season we've ever seen since the league has started for many different reasons there are a lot of players moving on there are a lot of players that are not going to be in the league that have been in the league for a long while a lot of teams look completely different to what they were and of course the elephant in the room is that it will be played on overwatch 2 which we don't know what state that's going to be in it's a beta sort of thing and i don't know what the thought process behind that is, considering that all the rumours are the, the release date for Overwatch 2 is 2023, not 2022. I honestly thought when it was announced that Overwatch 2 was going to be played by the Overwatch League in 2022 that I thought we were going to have probably a beta for Overwatch 2 by now and have it released sometime in uh, anniversary sort of time for Overwatch. And that has not been the case. So we still don't know. We have no idea. And this leads to a lot of uncertainty with the league, the game, etc. But what we're going to do in this video is completely look at the Overwatch League as, as a solo thing. With the Overwatch League being played on Overwatch 2, that means the team compositions are obviously inevitably going to change because Overwatch 2 is a 5v5 game, not a 6v6 game with one less tank uh, available. So that means we would expect to have less tank players in general in the league rosters are not finished yet they are not finished by any means some are some aren't but we are still seeing a lot of teams pick up two tanks a classic uh example of this is london spiffy who've got who have retained hadi but they've also managed to sign a big name in poco so that's a really nice signing for say london Spitfire. But you can also see it's the same with Parasitonal who's still got Darn on Vistola or um, someone along the lines of, uh, say, Shanghai Dragons who's still got Fate and Void right now. But there are also teams that are still lacking that second tank. So Soul Dynasty did pick up Smurf, which I think is a nice signing for the Soul Dynasty. I think Soul Dynasty have got a really nice roster, actually. But um, they are still only sort of running with that Smurf as the, as the tank. And... That's going to be interesting to see if that remains that way with them having three DPS players and three support players signed. I'd imagine that's a pretty nailed roster for Soul. I am not completely up to date with that, not going to lie, after my break. Um, Vancouver Titans still have only got False as well. So that's something else to be very aware of. Uh, False, obviously, their Canadian representative. Um, uh, and then, we, then we've got Super, who's the only tank on uh, San Francisco, as far as I know right now. So San Francisco also, that's another team we are going to see mighty different to what it was before. San Francisco has been one of the most stable rosters for the entirety of the Overwatch League since, well, we can say the inaugural season where it had a lot of changes, but since that second season, it's been really stable and really successful, but now we're seeing people like Proper and Kilo, uh, SNNM and Finn come in alongside Violet and Super and Garner, your Choi Hyobins and people like that. It's going to be a very different looking team and it's going to be interesting to see how that one works out. Um... Then we've also seen a vastly different Philadelphia Fusion, but of course, still keeping Carpe because, you know, Carpe doesn't really go anywhere, doesn't ever go anywhere. And then you've got some teams picking up massive players like Anz is signed for Gladiators. I actually think the Gladiators roster is stacked to the hilts for this coming season. Like you've got Patafan, you've got uh, Kevster, Anz, Reina, uh, Space, Funny Astro is now at Gladiators alongside Human Scood. I love that roster, not gonna lie. Love that roster. You've got downgrades, perhaps, when you look at Florida Mayhem. They've kind of gone for this mixed roster and it's all over this sort of place. I like also that, and this is not me being biased, but I really did like the old London players, or some of them at least, that were on the uh, team after Gesture at ETC left, so your Krillins and people of this world. Some of them are now coming back into the league after a year in the tier 2 scene, although it's now coming in for Toronto Defiant, and we're seeing Krillin come back in for the Washington Justice. I'm really, really, really looking forward to seeing them play, not gonna lie. 
Um, we're seeing the Chengdu Hunters say pretty stable. Um, but we're seeing a lot of new talent come into the league. It's going to make things very interesting. Very, very interesting. We're finally seeing OG, the support from America, come into the league for the Atlanta Reign. Uh, they also picked up Nero from the San Francisco Shock, which is a massive signing to play alongside Venom and Kai, who are their other DPS players. I'm sure that is going to be one hell of a, of a scene there. They've also got uh, Ultraviolet alongside OG. So um, if you're a Kakona clap, Atlanta Reign is probably your team. Not going to lie. With Nero, Gator, Hawk, OG, and Ultraviolet, it's really going to be a Kakona clap team. Um, I really like that the Americans, I suppose, if you are, you love America and you want a really, really American team to to represent, Atlanta Reign is probably your go-to spot, not going to lie. Um, because Houston Outlaws used to be, in my opinion, that sort of team, but they've gone very Korean. So we will see what happens with that. Uh, talking of uh, Houston Outlaws, they actually to pick up Iris and Lastro uh, alongside. They've still got Piggy. Jake is still there. From what I can see right now, which is a little bit of a surprise, not going to lie, uh, alongside Pelican and Dante. Um, there, I, I could do isolated videos on different people, not going to lie. I thought, and this is going to be controversial, but I said I was going to be in a controversial, and then going to speak my mind more. I'm surprised Shot kept hold of, kept hold of Violet, and I think I know why. But they let Twilight go. He's now at Toronto Defiant. Toronto Defiant, I've got Hisu, Finale, although Muse, Hotbur, and Chorong, and... Twilight, by the way. That's a good roster. But you had a good roster last time, Toronto, and you didn't get anything out of it, so we won't keep uh, we won't keep her upset, will we? Um So that'll be interesting to see what happens there. Dallas Field is still looking good. Uh Shanghai is still looking good, in my opinion. Uh they did pick up Who Are You, which is an interesting one, but they got Flutter and Lips, so you know. Let's just go with that. Nice to see Prophet still back in the league. One rip we do have is Bird Ring. He's gone, and that's really unfortunate. Nice to see Bird Ring partnering with a, a Prophet on stream the other day, though. Um, it's really sad to see Bird Ring go. Really, really sad. But honestly, with Gladys is having hands and Padafan now, that's that's a trade off. That that is a trade off that you will take if you're a Gladiators fan. Not gonna lie, um, that is some really nice pickups. I'm not going to rank these guys. I might do that in a separate video, uh, especially when the rosters are out. We're still waiting on a lot of announcements from the Fusion, the Excelsior, and the Los Angeles Kex. Um, I'm joking. The Los Angeles Valiant or Immortals Valiant. Are we going to keep calling them Immortals Valiant? They still did shit on their roster last year, like badly. But they are making completely different changes. Like they got Dia, Innovation, Becky, and Coldest right now. Um, I think they'll be better than they were last year. I still think they're going to be a bit of a meh roster. But we'll see what happens. It depends if they get the best of the DPS players. Because the DPS players are actually genuinely good. Um, but we'll see what happens. Um, one credit must be given to the scouting of these teams. Because the tier 2 scene is really weird right now. Like really, really weird. And something to note that if you don't know, the last academy in the EU, so the British Hurricane, have gone. They are no longer competing in tier 2. Uh, or Overwatch, so they are on an indefinite hiatus just like most of the other Academy rosters. So that entire plan for the Overwatch League and its feeder system has failed miserably uh, due to the neglect that Tier 2 has seen in the game overall. Really, really disappointing. Um, and it does mean that a change in uh, philosophy for London Spitfire, uh, when Nuki took over, she was expected to use a lot of the young talent that came from the British Hurricane. She has indeed done that, though. Admiral Raptor getting promoted. Um, Provide coming in on the other support as well. But we are also seeing some more um, experience, like Shax and Poco. Shax remaining there. Poco coming in from the Philadelphia Fusion. Obviously, they do now have Christopher, which is a brilliant um, coaching signing from London Spitfire, not going to lie. They retained Hadi, um, but they're also going to win some uh, British talent in Backbone and Provide as well. So... There's going to be a lot of interesting stuff to look at. Also, Stryker returning to Boston Uprising is an interesting one. It's going to be really interesting to see what he does in Rose of Town there. Really interesting. Um, there's a lot of talking points for Overwatch League 2022. And it's going to be make or break. It's its fifth season now. Um, and it needs the hype back. That's the best way to put it, I suppose. It needs hype back. 
It needs... It needs this breath of life. Now, it would not surprise me if... And I believe the Overwatch League is on its, what, fourth leadership now? Like, come on, brah. That's kind of weird. Um, in only five years. Um, but... Not even five years yet, but... There's a lot of... There's a lot of possibilities with how this pans out. This can go okay. It can go really badly. And it could possibly kill the League. Or the Overwatch League sort of acts as a springboard. And I think this is what Blizzard's plan is and the Overwatch League's plan is. And that is why the Overwatch League will be played on Overwatch 2 this year. Because... I think they want to use it as a springboard, not just for the league, but Overwatch in general. Um, I think they're relying too heavily on it because the viewership is not what it used to be. But I think they're hoping to create some hype around the league with the inclusion of Overwatch 2. Have everyone join in for those opening weeks. See what Overwatch 2 is like. So you've got people who are not usually watching the Overwatch League coming in to see exactly what this new game is like. This new look Overwatch and how it's going to play out with all these changes 5v5 new maps uh probably push being entered as well um we'll see how that works and then off the back of that they're hoping by word of mouth social media coverage news coverage uh online stuff like that they are hoping that this will get the ball rolling for a positive overwatch 2 build up and we will see what happens because that possibly is something that might have been mentioned to the content creators in that little meeting that they had. Um, so that is something we will we will see what happens, I suppose. Uh, but that's kind of I don't know. I don't know what this video is. What it was meant to? What was meant to? I don't know. It was just it was meant to be an owl update video, I think. Honestly, I lost track. This is kind of what I want to do, though. Um, I want your opinions on this, genuinely. There's it's a very big season for the Overwatch League. Um, there's a lot of spice around it and there's going to be it's either going to be a fuck up or it's going to be uh it's going to create an absolute ruckus it'll be super interesting but it's not going to hit the heights that the recent valiant champions has or anything like that that show and that production was phenomenal and there's one thing i said after that and it's uh they the Overwatch League, even from its very, very, very beginning, has a lot to learn from the way other things can, uh, other things are done. And I think, yeah, there's another video in what I want to say about the way in which the Overwatch League is built. But it's, yeah, a big season and I want to see exactly how this goes down. I'm hyped to see Overwatch 2 in action. That's my biggest thing for this season. Not necessarily the teams. Not necessarily the players, as much as I love to see Grillen back, uh, to see Paddy Van back, actually coming back from Valorant as well, um, and see Deer on a team that he might actually just completely start on all the time. That's also really interesting. And to see new, young, really exciting talent like OG and Ultraviolet coming up. Um, not just that, but to see Overwatch 2 in action and see how it works is going to be a very big part of the season and a very big part to see if people actually get st stay tuned. Because... We have seen so many things where Overwatch is horrible to watch. Um, Goats was a very big part of that. But will 5v5 not only change... This is a closing comment. Will 5v5 and Overwatch 2 not only change the way in which the game is played, but the way in which the game is watchable? Because if it makes the game extremely watchable... This could be the biggest season of the Overwatch League yet. And it could be a massive turning point for a lot of things. But that's copium. We are yet to see a lot of things. So I suppose we can ride the copium for now. It's a long time until the Overwatch League kicks off. And we will see what happens. But it's nice to be back. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope your new year is going well as well. Look out for more videos coming up soon. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.